Hello everyone, this is Dustin here from UBI First, and this video will be walking you through the enhancements made in our latest major release, version 2.0. As most of you already know, eBay made some major changes to their search platform back in November of 2014, which included changing their API platform to a third party, which increased some delayed times of newly listed items being found, where they went from being found somewhere between seconds to maximum of a couple of minutes to possibly up to five or 10 minute delay. While delays of up to a couple of minutes are still persistent in the platform for everyone as well as you buy first. There are some enhancements that we made to how we search for items and the methods in which we search for newly listed items. And you buy first is now going to search both via the API and the RSS feeds, where previously the API was usually the search method that found items fastest. In addition to these back-end processes, we've also made some improvements on the keyword search setting level. And here you're going to be able to search just by category, uh, by filtering, by a specific condition, as well as including or excluding particular sellers. And the major change is going to be uh, this interval setting where for a particular item that you may not want to search as frequently as items that are more competitive, you'll be able to set the time interval in which that particular keyword will be searched. So if you're searching for something where maybe only a couple of those items are coming up a day, but you don't want to have to be searching for it, you know, a couple times every second and taking the resources away from your other more competitive search terms, you'll be able to set this threshold at 10 seconds, 30 seconds, or a minute, and it will only search at that interval and free up your computer and internet resources to search for your other more competitive items more frequently. And lastly, the threads feature is going to allow you to open up multiple concurrent threads with your PC's local resources in order to call out more frequently for a particular keyword search. So like the interval setting could be used for an item that you might not want to call as frequently, the threads feature is simply the opposite of that and is going to allow you to call out as many times as possible that your local PC resources and your internet connection will allow. Just on a side note, the threads feature is an option that is only available on the enterprise subscription level. Next is the Improved Navigation and Options ribbon, which is basically a cleaned up navigation interface that's going to allow you to more quickly set up and find the options that you're looking for as well as allow you to hide all of the ribbon options so that you can have a full screen view of item details instead of wasting screen space for navigation options that you're not looking at while you're searching. The next feature we're going to review is likely to make the most impact on your buying experience. The docked and float panels enhancement is going to allow you to finely chisel the user experience and allow you to create a unique item layout page based on your exact needs. The panels are basically main sections of uh, eBay listing, including the pictures, item specific, seller information, title and description areas, and the buy button. To view the different panel options that you have, head to the navigation menu under view and panels, as well as two default layouts are available for you under the view workspace menu navigation as a basic layout and full details layout. This will give you two main starting points to configure your own customization. Reconfiguring the interface is as easy as dragging and dropping the different modules. To move a different module, find the module that you want to move on the main interface, select it with the mouse, click and hold the mouse one button, and drag it to a different area of the screen. As you're dragging the panel around the interface, you'll see the carousel icon will come up in the background in these different module spaces. Like here, there's one at the top, a side carousel, on the right side of the screen, a bottom carousel, 
and then a carousel over on the left. Each one of these panels here represents a space where you can configure the panel to lock in place. You can also resize these panels within the module space that you have them attached to and remove specific panels that you don't need by clicking on the X next to the panel name on the main user interface. Within the item properties panel, you'll be able to configure any of the item specific and listing information that you want to see and how you see it. To do so, click the settings gear option on that panel and then click the customize layout button. Here, once you expand this window, you'll see items that are hidden, as well as the layout tree view, which will show you items that are being used. Simply drag and drop these data points in the order which you want to see them or drag them next to a particular item to see them side by side. Remember, after you've customized the item properties or the overall layout panels to save the settings. Under the item properties, a save button appears at the top and give it a name as well as for the docking panels section to save the workspace under the view workspace capture workspace setting. The improved filtering module can be found under the home menu item and then clicking on filters. This will allow you to set up different conditions based on return item specifics and create if then statements to do particular actions on the return results. So you can format specific cells individually, format the entire row, remove rows, as well as an abundance of different formatting styles based on the criteria that you have. As an example, you might choose to highlight the item condition field as green if it's used, new, or refurbished, or highlight it yellow or red if it is for parts or not working. Lastly, the best offer module has been introduced. You'll be able to directly make a best offer for an item through you by first. For starters, you'll know that an item has the best offer by looking at the best offer icon at the top of the ribbon header. If it's grayed out, then it's not available, but if it's dark, then you'll know that you are able to make an offer on that item. Simply click that button and a dialog box will pop up allowing you to see the make offer section and you can put in a percentage of the buy it now price and it will save those settings for future attempts to make an offer on an item. The results will be returned directly to the interface indicating whether the offer has been automatically accepted or whether it's pending waiting for the seller to decide if he wants to accept. Other small enhancements include the picture module area which will allow you to resize the default pictures which are returned on your screen as well as give you a mouse over enlarging feature where you just simply roll your mouse over the image and it will enlarge and when you move your cursor off or to another image, it will go back to the thumbnail. The buy button has also been made into a panel function where you'll be able to move and customize this panel in the interface where the buy button best fits your need. This covers most of the major enhancements made in version 
Thanks for checking out this review and we'll have some follow-up videos on these individual specific enhancements that give a little bit more detail on how to set up and how to use these to your advantage and win more of those newly listed items on eBay. As always, we appreciate any feedback that our users have. And if you are checking out this review but are not a You Buy First user, you can find the link in the comment section below, as well as a link to our website with other tutorials and best practices on how to use You Buy First.